Oh, and I just want to echo the um, good wishes of our uh, the other uh, professors who have introduced their students. I'm a relatively new faculty member. I just started at Penn State last August. This is my first time coming to the symposium, and it's just wonderful to see the collegiality in these communities that we can build for our students. So I'm looking forward to participating in this in years to come. Um, so the speaker I'm introducing today is Shan Wu. I've not had the pleasure of teaching Shan myself, but I know that um, since her arrival at Penn State, she's quickly distinguished herself um, in our department and among our colleagues. Um, so Shan is a second year student at Penn State. She has been in the Schreier Honors College since matriculation, and she intends to double major in art history and Spanish, and minor in music and medieval studies. Her current research interests include medieval Iberian sacred art and architecture, relic veneration in medieval Europe, and social art history. In addition to her schoolwork, Shan works on campus as a public speaking undergraduate mentor in the Undergraduate Speaking Center, plays the violin in the campus orchestra, and serves as a team captain and the public relations chair for Penn State Mock Trial. So please join me in welcoming Shan. What do medieval relics and reliquaries represent? The modern layperson may see them as religious trinkets. The medieval faithful saw them as a connection to God and the saints. The medievalist sees them as a path to learning of the past. Three objects in the treasury of San Isidoro de Leon demonstrate that relics, reliquaries, and other sacred objects could at once express cultural exchange and serve political ends. The Spanish city of Leon was a religiously and culturally important destination in the medieval world. The Camino de Santiago journey was popular amongst Christians in Spain and France, and Leon fell along that path through northern Spain, the second to last stop on the map shown here. <coughs> Pilgrims following this route would stop in Leon and visit the Basilica de San Isidoro as they trekked across northern Spain. Dedicated to Saint Isidore of Seville, the Confessor, the Basilica holds a treasury that stores a variety of medieval sacred items. In 1063, St. Isidore's relics were translated from Leon to Leon from Seville, and Isidore died in the 7th century, but it was this relocation that increased the popularity of the cult of the saint. St. Isidore became the patron saint of Leon, and his remains became important in the context of medieval pilgrimage. In the Pilgrim's Guide to Santiago de Compostela, Pilgrims are instructed to visit the venerable body of Blessed Isidore in the city of Leon before arriving at the final destination of Santiago. The guide in its entirety calls upon pilgrims to recognize the importance and power of relics as they serve as a point of connection between the worldly pilgrims and the heavenly saints. These relics did not just exist alone though. In medieval Leon, the reliquary that contains St. Isidore's relics held equal importance. This paper will focus on three objects that were stored in the treasury of San Isidoro, the reliquary of St. Isidore, the crucifix of Fernando and Sancha, and a Scandinavian container. The three works were all composed near the 11th century, and at first, this may seem to be the only factor they have in common. However, through their variety of uses and designs, reliquaries in medieval Leon came to represent faith, beauty, and power. In her book, Strange Beauty, Art historian Cynthia Hahn explores the purpose of the early medieval reliquary. Through this study, she raises questions regarding the interpretation of reliquaries to their audiences in conjunction with their design. She proposes that whether artists and patrons were aware of such theoretical discussion, it becomes entirely evident that the imaginative and metaphoric construction of meaning is the primary operation of reliquary. In applying this perspective, she recognizes the purpose of making a reliquary will offer different greatly in its later use, especially considering the changes in audience and liturgical use. She proposes the idea of metaphors to encourage meditation as a means of connecting an audience emotionally to a relic and to the faith through the viewing and use of reliquaries. The strange beauty of a reliquary is not just what meets the eye. It connects social and religious practices to form new perceptions of these containers. The beauty of the reliquary begins with its visual presentation. In 1063, 
King Fernando I received the remains of St. Isidore from Muslim ruled Seville. In their essay focusing on iconography and purpose of this reliquary, art historians Horst Bredekamp and Frank Sehausen propose that the reliquary's means to visualizing revealed a programmatic sense of figuration, where the viewer can formulate a narrative from still scenes. With architectural and ornamental elements, the reliquary of St. Isidore creates a relationship between the image and image field, creating the metaphorical perceptions to the visuals of the reliquary. Redekop and Sehausen's article visually analyzes the reliquary of St. Isidore in great detail, proposing what the reliquary meant to viewers and how it developed its own identity. Narrative may be difficult to express through the static medium of the leaf carving, yet it is this complexity that attracts the viewer. Through the iconography of this reliquary, there's a clear message of beauty and faith through the imagery of Genesis, especially in the fall of man. Bredekamp and Sehausen recognize similarities between the events depicted on the reliquary and on the Bernward doors, crafted in early 11th century Hildesheim, Germany. Such parallels may perhaps indicate the importance of the fall of man in both liturgical and artistic practices. The authors note specifically the unique stylization of Adam and Eve, differing from the Hildesheim imagery and serving as a new interpretation to the cycle. Vegetal beings are still present as a decorative element to the reliquary, but less apparent in the figural composition. This new perception of vegetation may reflect what the Leonese perceived as natural beauty and where it belonged. In such scenes of expulsion and sin, natural beauty does not necessarily belong, and there is instead a greater focus on the human body. At first glance, it becomes clear to a viewer that the bodies are distorted and not reflective of reality. The figures are presented in an almost supernatural form with elongated limbs, bloated stomachs, and hunched posture. Such disconnection between Adam and Eve and modern human depictions relates to Han's idea of relics themselves, regarding the paradoxical status of an object, belonging to both the past and the present. By viewing the aesthetics of reliquaries with this idea, the imagery of beauty is meant to be understood in contrast to time. This reliquary became the venture point of pilgrims to Leon. The relics of St. Isidore brought attention and traction to the growing city exactly what it needed to increase its political power in the context of the Iberian Peninsula. The reliquary was venerated alongside another artifact, both now located in the treasury and dating to the consecration of the basilica. This other artifact, the crucifix of Fernando and Sancha, was a gift from the royal couple to the church intended to commemorate the occasion. This ivory crucifix was one of several ivory carvings associated with the ruling period of Fernando, but styles are presenting a break with earlier Spanish traditions in this medium. Art historian David Robb considers the ivory crucifix as part of a greater system of Leonese works, dating roughly to the same period, and creates a reflection between the political and artistic interactions of the kingdom. He notes that the carving fuses Islamic and local Leonese elements, creating variation in the motifs and decoration of the crucifix. Heraldic groups of animals and foliage can be seen encompassing the front sides of the cross in intricate details and geometric balance. Opposite sides mirror each other, allowing a visual balance both horizontally along Christ's outstretched arms and vertically along the length of his body. The Islamic tradition creates a distinction between the style of the corpus and that of the carving of the cross itself. While the body of Christ is clearly separate from the cross positioned atop it, the Christian tradition of connecting the body to the shape remains, reflected in the connection between the body and the background. Evangelist symbols are placed on the backside points of the cross. Rob argues that the style of the Leon ivories is strikingly parallel to that of the Antonian Echternach group, both to emphasize the uniqueness of the crucifix in the peninsula and the seeming relationship with Islamic art styles. Islamic traditions have prevalent influence within these 11th century ivory works, but by adding Christian motifs, the Leonese were able to establish their local identity as a Christian kingdom in the Iberian Peninsula, where the majority of lands remained in Muslim-controlled Al-Andalus. Fernando staked a claim to this land, using his religion and God's will to justify this transition of religious political powers. In establishing his claim to Castilla and Leon, Fernando's marriage to Sancho of Leon gave him the power to expand into Taifa-ruled territories. A spirit of nationalism and identity had be began to increase in northern Iberia, and when combined with an interest in pilgrimage, 
the Kingdom of Leon invested in such opportunities to gain influence in the medieval landscape. Such acts of alliance between Christian leaders in medieval Spain reflects the interesting concept of political marriage, which art historian Nancy Wicker suggests as a possible reason as to why a Viking item was also stored in San Isidoro. In her article, Wicker looks at an 11th century Scandinavian style container and suggests that its presence in Leon was from a marriage gift. In developing more certainty regarding the container's unique style and structure, she considers its possible intended uses and compares different Scandinavian, Western European, and Islamic traditions. Previous scholars have suggested that the donors intended the container to be used as a reliquary, but Wicker finds this highly unlikely due to its cylindrical shape and open work technique. She notes that the container was likely passed through multiple owners before arriving at San Isidoro, perhaps placed at another royal chapel in the northern Iberian region. Once it entered the treasury of San Isidoro, it functioned as a Christian reliquary associated with St. Nicholas. However, this function is documented only from the 6th century, whereas it was manufactured in the 11th century, from the 16th century, pardon me. This container is made likely of red deer antler with mammon style carving, which features avian and serpentine motifs. Large birds and small snakes were commonly seen in Scandinavian Viking Age style and the Leon container follows similar proportions and style. With such intricate detail and a Scandinavian origin, it is unlikely that the container was forged or lost. Instead, Wicker suggests that it was a marriage gift, crafting political alliance between medieval Vikings and Christian communities. She also considers the container to be an element of a creolized environment with possible connections between Islamic aromatic practices, Scandinavian aesthetics, and Leonese use. There's been an interesting relationship between Viking and Iberian cultures, with only scarce accounts of their activities. Historian Anne Christus reports that the evidence for Vikings in Iberia in the 10th century covers less than a decade, during which Vikings raided the coasts of both Christian and Muslim Iberia, and may briefly have settled in the peninsula. This interaction supports the possibility of an original Leonese Islamic Scandinavian container that Iberian Christians later repurposed. While there remains no record of its intended use or recipient, the reliquary made its passage through medieval Liberia and served as a status symbol. Its Scandinavian origin demonstrates diplomacy and cultural exchange between the cultures, connecting the reliquary to the political power of San Isidoro. Such a unique presence of the Scandinavian container gave the city of Leon a special identity, allowing it to grow in status and influence. The possible diplomatic translation of this reliquary demonstrates how material objects can serve as manifestations of power across the greater landscape of medieval Europe. The use of these reliquaries within medieval Leon should not be interpreted through just the lens of religion. By thoroughly examining the political and social practices of the region, the diverse perception of these objects is apparent. The reliquary of St. Isidore, the crucifix of Fernando and Sancha, and the Scandinavian container allowed the city of Leon to showcase political power through apparently religious objects. Cynthia Hahn encourages scholars to look at reliquaries as metaphor, the invisible by means of the visible. At San Isidoro, this idea stays true. With the treasury objects assuming the roles as messengers of the cross-cultural beauty, Christian faith, and political power of medieval Leon. Thank you.